Hello everyone. So today I'm going to share with you a security audit tool that you can use to audit your operating system. So this tool is very good because it's open source, free, and at the same time, this tool allows you to assess, measure, and enforce security baselines for your system. So if let's say you have launched your instance on AWS, you want to know whether there's any misconfiguration or there's any vulnerabilities in your OS or your server, you can use this tool to do an audit. So what this tool does is that it has various security policies that provide hardening guides and configuration baselines. Most importantly, the standards that is provided in the tool is actually maintained by NISD. So it actually has a cybersecurity framework to mitigate any security risk. Okay. So now I'm going to share with you the installation process of how you can use this tool. Okay. So I'm using a Windows machine. So first you need to install this thing called Xmin X server. Basically it's a display server because anytime you want to launch a GUI, you need this server to display. Next, we're going to launch an instance on an AWS platform. And on this server itself, we're going to use the Amazon Linux 2 operating system. Then we're going to use a tool called Putty to SSH in to the server. So in that tool itself, you need to enable the X11 forwarding so that you can connect to the Xmin X server. So after you have installed the Xmin X server, you need to turn it on on the Windows machine. So once it's turned on, then you can launch the OpenScape workbench. So this is a general idea of how you can install and use this tool. So first you go to AWS platform, you will see this uh, dashboard. So you click on EC2, then you launch, uh, click on the launch instances. So there are a few options you can choose. So we choose this, the first one. So we choose the free tier. This is for uh, testing purposes. So all these just leave it as a default. And add storage. Yeah, we can leave it at this default as well. Add that, configure security group. Then you review and launch. If you want, you can choose a existing key pad that you have generated for yourself. If not, you can also create a new one. So I can put test two. So I can download this key pair. Okay, so PM stands for Privacy Enhanced Mail. So this can only be downloaded once. Yeah, so this key pair, once you have downloaded, you need to keep it at a safe place. So in this case, you just launch instances. So you need this key pair, right, for later on when you want to SSH into your server. So not anyone can just SSH in into your instances. So this is for security. Okay, so now we just go back to our instances. Okay, click on EC2. So make sure that your instance is running. So next you click on this. So the status check says that it's initializing. So just make sure that everything has passed the check. Then next you see this connect. So you click connect. So this is the instruction on how you can actually SSH in into this instance. So we are going to use this tool called Party to SSH in. So we just click this, copy, paste it here. Then we're going to use this as an Amazon Linux tool. Next, you're going to convert this uh, PM format to the PPK. PM stands for Privacy Enhanced Mail. So that is the key pair that is downloaded from uh, AWS, but you need to convert to a party private key, which stands for PPK, in order for party to use it to connect to the instance. So what you can do is you go to party, After you install party, right? There's this thing called party gen. So you just click on this. Now next, you need to load the private key file. So what you do is to load, go to where you store the, then click on all files. So you can see here test2.pm. So you click on open. So you have successfully imported the foreign key. 
then next you save the private key. Then click yes. So you just that test two dot p. Okay. So once you are done, you can go to SSH. Go to off, then browse. Click on test two. Then go back to a session and save these uh, settings. Okay, so once it's done, you can click open. Just click accept, login as EC2 user. Because that's the username that you have to log in. Eh? This is the username. So, okay. So once you reach this step, means that you are able to connect to the instance successfully. Next, we need to install the admin S server in the Windows machine. So over here, you can see this is the admin S server for Windows. So you just click on download, to download. As you can see here, this is a setup file. You just click on it, just run, and click next to install. So you create a desktop icon. Okay, so once you are, once it's finished, then you just launch it. So how do you know whether it's launched? You can see at the bottom, XME server 0, 0.0. So once you see this icon, it means that it's running. Okay. Next, you go to here, this uh, instruction guide to enable S11 forwarding in Amazon Linux 2. Okay. So just follow these instructions. So since you are using Amazon Linux 2, we will install these uh, S11 related packages. We'll copy. Wait for it to finish, then click yes. Okay, so once it's completed, then we go on to the next step. So we will install S11 testing tool just to make sure that the S11 forwarding is working properly. Yes. Okay, it's completed. Next, we go to our party. So next, right, you have to exit first. So click on exit, then launch the tool again. So this time around, what you need to do, click on this Amazon Linux tool, load, and go to SSH, click on S11. So this enable S11 forwarding. Then you just follow the instruction. So you see here, we need to change the local host. 0, 0.0. We go back to session again to save. Then we load, then open. So next, we're going to run this command. X off this. So we list the number, uh, all the tools that is being installed. So you can see here, once you see this, it means that it has been, uh, it, this tool has been installed inside the system. Then you do a export, display. Okay, next we need to launch the Xcloud or Xterm. So we just choose either one. So I choose Xcloud. So you can see the clock here. So it's being displayed correctly. Okay, so next we need to do is to install the OpenScape Workbench. So this is the part where we can install the graphical interface for this 
OpenScape. So we do a yum install. Oops. Sudo yum. Okay, yes. Just wait for it to install. Okay, it's completed. So next you need to launch the skip workbench. And once you're able to see this means you have installed correctly, okay? So you can select the content to load. So in this case, we are using Amazon Linux too. So you just select on this, then load content. So as you can see here, there are a few things we can choose. So we, the checklist, we can just leave it as default. Customization, also leave it as default. The profile, we can choose the different policies that we want to launch. So in this case, there are a few. For demonstration purposes, I will just show the first one, C2S. So what exactly is C2S? So we can actually search for it. So the C2S stands for Commercial Cloud Services Baseline as maintained by the US government. Okay, so as you can see here. So what it does is that it makes sure that all the configurations is in compliance with the CIS uh, terms and condition. Okay, so you can take a further look into this, uh, all the different uh, checklists that it provides. So once we are okay with this, then we uh, go back here. Then we just click scan. Just wait for it to check. Okay, so this is completed. So we just close it first. Okay, let me show you this tool. So this tool is called Win SCP. So what it does is that it able to launch the SFTP protocol, secure file transfer protocol to connect to the instance and transfer file out from the instance. Okay. So in this case, let me go back here. So this is our host address, host name, then username, EC2 user. There's no password. So we'll click on advanced. So we we'll click on authentication, launch the private key file. So for the download. So in this case, test two. So we go back, so click OK. So we need to save this. Click OK. So next we click login. So click yes. So now it's login already. So let's go back to our OpenScape workbench. So we need to save the result. So there are a few options we can choose from. So we want to save it as HTML report, okay? So this is the file format that we can actually click and then look at it in the HTML format. So we just save it uh, somewhere here, they will create a new folder called security audit. Okay, then we we'll click on it, then we just save. So next, let's go back to this green SCP. We just click refresh. Then we see this folder, security audit, click on it. Then we see this file. So we will copy and then put in our, you can go back, download folder, click paste. Okay, so once it's uh, been downloaded, you can see it's over here. So we need to open it using a HTML format. So in this case, you go home.
And there you go. That is the OpenScape evaluation report. So at the top, it will show you the overall, um, what is the result? So 78 passed and 113 failed. So you can actually check what are the things that have failed and then fix accordingly. Let's click on one of these. So in this case, you see this is the one that is why it failed because it we never disable SSH access via empty password. So, I mean, we, we don't have a password. Now, so it is able to detect that and it's able to flag it out. So the result is error. And it will show you what is the remediation actions that you can do. So you can see here, that is the part where you can do the remediation. So that's good because it tells you what are things you can do to harden your whole system. Okay. So that's all for my demonstration. I hope it gives you a better idea on how you can install the OpenScape tool to check your operating system. So if you like this video, I'll appreciate you give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in the next session.